Say when. Good evening, everybody. It's Birdman Mel here, and I am really, really excited about the program tonight. I got to tell you, of all the programs we've had, this is probably the one that the Birdman is looking forward to. We are going to have what I'm calling the ultimate reality show tonight. You're going to get to look inside the life of some wood ducks. And you may say, oh, Mel, what are you talking about? Well, I tell you what, the wood duck to me is one of the most beautiful ducks in the world, and we have some of the best experts in the world. I'm so happy in a second, I'm going to be turning the program over to Bob and Donna McFarland. Good evening down there to Texas. How are you guys doing? Hey, that's the fun thing about what we're all learning how to do now. Most of the folks here know, heck, I hadn't even been on Facebook before we started this stuff, but uh, we're gonna, I'm going to try to hurry on and through my little intro here because these guys have a program that I want you to stay tuned for because you're going to love it. We are going to give away some prizes. We're going to give away one of these big old wood duck houses. I told you about a couple books I love because you know having children interested in birds is the number one reason I'm doing this. And that Jump Little Wood Ducks book I talked about last week, we're going to do that. And that Ducks Activity book. So there'll be prizes tonight, so stay tuned. And if you don't have your children watching, make sure you show them this later because this is really, really, really just an insight into one animal that one bird that God just makes special in my opinion and it's going to be so much fun for you all to you know to learn about it together but also share it with the children and the one thing we want to do is make sure you let us know where you're from because that helps you win those prizes and if you've got questions man this is your chance these two folks Bob and Donna know what they're talking about I met them at something called a pond boss and I want to thank Bob Lusk for putting us together pond boss is a organization that one puts out a magazine that I write for once in a while and uh, most of all ha has conferences training things where Bob helps people in the sports fishing world so uh, it was a thrill to get to meet uh, Bob at that and ever since then I've said man this is a guy I can learn from and folks you're gonna learn from this couple tonight so without further ado Bob and Donna it's your show and for the first time in this thing I think I'm gonna get plumb off the screen so you folks can really see the beauty of the photos that these guys have to share with you so Bob and Donna, I can't thank you enough for joining us all the way from Texas. Oh, for sure. I don't know world birds very good. I know birds. I always tell folks, I know the birds in my backyard, and oh, I wish I had a you know, a, a body of water where I could get a wood duck, but I tell you what, they would beat the top 10. They'd be in my top five because it's just very, very, very beautiful. It might even be above my, you know, it's a little hard to not to root for my hometown Cardinals and Bluebirds, but it's, it's very hard. Uh, wood duck is just incredibly beautiful. Hi, Toad. Hi. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. Tell us what's been happening. Yeah. What's going on? video we lost it for a second guys we want to leave that on there there you go I'm sorry okay. it came and went on us there a second Bob there he goes mm -hmm. talk to us tell us what's been happening yeah okay what's going on absolutely you can trust and it just went away okay so you just tell us what you want next okay You got it up on the screen.
your leg. That's a Mel, pretty good wood duck. Pretty good job there. You feel like you had a wood duck in your studio there? Well, I was looking around to see where she was. Yeah. So um, if you look at a Cornell range map, the wood ducks are almost everywhere in the United States. They're not in the deserts. They're not in the Rocky Mountains. And it's a little spotty along the West Coast, but uh, almost all of the United States has wood ducks. The biggest con concentration is 100 miles either side of the Mississippi River, but we are in Upper East Texas. We're further than that from the Mississippi River, and we have lots and lots of wood ducks here. So you're saying here in Missouri, where, where we are, Central Missouri, we're about 130 miles from the Mississippi, so we're in a good spot. You are. You're in a very good spot. You're closer to the Mississippi than we are, but we have lots of wood ducks. Cool. Uh, you have to have um, a pond or a lake for the wood ducks to come to. So uh, the size of your pond or lake doesn't matter. We have a six acre lake and we have lots of wood ducks. Donna's dad has a quarter acre pond with three wood duck boxes on it. He gets lots of wood ducks. We have a beautiful 3,400 acre lake very close to us. It's called Lake Cypress Springs. And if you put a wood duck box up on that lake in the morning, you're likely to have a nesting hen by afternoon. So we have lots of wood ducks in this area, and it, and we know that the wood duck population here is increasing. So you can increase the number of ducks that come to your pond by throwing corn. Okay, Mel, we get a message and they say Facebook Live has no sound. What do you think? I'm not sure. I'm hearing you in my ear phone, but I'm not I'm not sure what's going on in the Facebook Live. I see my staff on the phone uh, right now. Mel, they say they hear you, but they can't hear us. Oh rats. Okay, they're they're hearing me but not them. Hey, let us let us try We're something on, from this end. They think maybe they fixed it now. You you kind of a lag, so it's just muted. No. No. Okay, what do you think? We just have to ask the audience if they're hearing you. Kaylee says they're thumbs hearing. up it here. Says they're hearing us. Yep, okay. say, it says they're hearing you. I apologize for that, but you know, you work That's with that so Zoom wrong. thing. Sometimes it zooms in, sometimes it zooms. I don't know where the heck it zooms, but we're together now. We'll, we'll zoom in here. Okay. So you can increase the number of ducks that come to your lake by throwing corn in the edge of the lake. So we have uh, a feeder. It's an automatic feeder. It runs on a solar panel and a battery, and it throws deer corn in the lake twice a day. And the ducks learn to tell time, so they start congregating around the feeder about 15 minutes before it goes off twice a day. Wood ducks uh, mate for the season. So wood ducks start showing up in large numbers here in mid-December. And when they come in, they're not paired up. It's just a big bunch of guide ducks and girl ducks, and they're all hanging out together. It's kind of like Don and I going to Starbucks and seeing our friends and having a vente latte. They're just enjoying the company of the other ducks. And then in late January, they start pairing up. And when they pair up, they start going around to the boxes on the lake. We have seven wood duck boxes on our lake and the male and female will go around to the boxes. The female will go into the box. She'll move some wood chips around. She'll fly back down to her partner. And they'll go to another box and eventually they will settle on which box they want. And then both those ducks will fly up to the top of the box that they've chosen and they'll stay there for maybe minutes and that will be their way of saying to the other ducks on the lake this is our duck box this is where we're going to nest this year so it's like putting a sold sign 
out in front of your house. But uh, then if you want to attract wood ducks, then your next step is to get a wood duck box. So we use the Songbird Essentials duck box and we really like it. I've got it behind me here. It's a beautiful box. I know you can just see part of it. It's a beautiful box. It's made out of Western red cedar, so it lasts a long time. It's well designed. It uh, is very well made. It has a door on the side, so you can open it. The door runs about three quarters of the way down, and you can open that door without fear of eggs falling out or baby ducks. And then it's got another door lower down that you would use when you're gonna clean out the box altogether. So we've used this box now for quite a long time, Mel, and we really think you've done a good job there. Well, you know why it's so good. You told me how to make it, man. I just followed your <laughs> instructions. You get the credit. We met our duck boxes on a metal U-post. So uh, we use a seven foot, foot post. We drive the U-post in the ground. We drill some holes in the back of the box and we bolt, bolt the box to the U-post. You can use a different post, a wooden post, and that doesn't matter. Uh, but you're going to have to have a predator guard. So I hope you're looking at a photo of a duck box on a predator guard that is a metal cone predator guard. And this is the predator guard that's recommended by the Wood Duck Society. So if you said say to me, what... Um, what predator guard would you recommend? It's the metal foam predator guard. But here on our lake, we have diamondback water snakes. So these snakes are not Ooh. poisonous, but they're aggressive. They don't go away from you, they come towards you. Ooh, my wife and, wouldn't like that. Yeah, and they're big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> six to eight feet long. So they have figured out how to get around the metal cone predator guard. So about a year ago, we went to a different kind of predator guard. We we put a slinky on the post. It's just the way you used to have there. Mel has one slinky on the post. That keeps the four legged predators off the post. And then we take a big wad of bird netting and put that on the post. So we use uh, this uh, bird netting, uh, Songbird Essentials carries it, and we put a big wad of that bird netting on the post, and we think that's gonna work to keep the snakes out of, out of the box. Where we've only had it in action for uh, about a year now, we feel like we need some more uh, evidence and we need some more experience in figuring how to attach the netting to the box. But we think that's going to be the answer for those big snakes. And I, I suspect most of you don't have to deal with the diamond backwater snakes, but if you do, we know that's a challenge. So inside the box, you will put nesting material. The wood ducks don't provide their own nesting material, so you have to provide it for them. We use wood chips. We get them from the local feed store. If you buy the Songbird Essentials box, then you will get two bags of wood chips inside the box. And that'll be enough to get you through the first year. Here's after each hatch, you will kind of scrape off the top layer of debris. There'll be egg fragments. There may be some unhatched eggs and you'll just scrape that off and then you'll be ready for the next hatch. Here's a tip. In our area, we have wasps and mud daubers and yellow jackets. And sometimes they build their nests inside our duck boxes. So what you do is you take a bar of soap and you rub it on the top of the box or and the side of the box. And that will, the insects won't nest on top of the soap. So that'll solve that problem for you. 
we do that once a year in the fall when we're getting ready for the next season. Hey, I'll vouch for that. We do the same thing in bluebird boxes. Yeah, good. Another issue we sometimes have here is ants, and that's an easy problem to solve. You get a um, ant spray that has a long life, like the Bengal ant spray, and you just pick a section of the post and you spray the post with the ant spray, and that'll keep the ants from coming up from the ground into your duck box. So a video camera, we love our video camera. It has greatly enhanced our enjoyment of the duck box. We use the Hawkeye Nature Cam. I've got one here. This is what it looks like. Mel has one. <laughs> and uh, Mel, Songbird Essentials carries this camera. It has high definition. It has color. It has sound. It has night vision. There's a lot of technology wrapped up in this tiny camera, and uh, we highly recommend it. It requires electricity, so you will run a wire from your house out to the camera. If you're within 300 feet of electricity, you're a candidate for this camera. And that wire will send a signal back to your TV. We went to uh, Walmart and bought an inexpensive 27 inch flat screen TV and we dedicated it to our ducks and we have had excellent results. That's a Saturday night movie you can't beat. <laughs> then you're ready for the egg laying and you're going to see the ducks get the egg because you're going to have your video camera in your box and you're going to see it on your TV. So the wood ducks lay one egg per day until they get 10 to 15 eggs. And that's when the incubation starts. If you see more than 15 eggs in your box, that means you've had more than one wood duck laying eggs in your box. Now that's common, our, our lake, we have way more ducks than we have boxes. So it's common to get uh, more than one egg, one, more than one hen laying eggs. Mm -hmm. If that happens, somewhere in the egg laying process, there's going to be a big duck fight. So, Kaylee, I think you have a video of a duck fight, and it's quite a sight to see. They can be brutal, and the duck that wins that fight wins the honor of incubating the eggs and raising the baby ducks. In wood duck world, mama duck raises, incubates the eggs and raises the duck, ducks, the baby ducks by herself. So now you're ready for uh, hatch day. The incubation takes 25, 28 to 35 days. Early in the year when it's cold in February, March, incubation takes 35 days. By the time you get out to June, about to do the incubation falls to about 28 days. Mama duck takes two breaks per day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Being a mama wood duck incubating those eggs is hard duty. And she will lose 25% her body weight while she's incubating the eggs. So take a look at your mama duck when she first starts incubating the eggs, and then take a hard look again after the eggs hatch and you're gonna see a noticeably smaller duck. So now we're ready for hatch day. The, the, egg, the hatch usually starts late morning and continues into the afternoon. Uh, we have a video clip of hatch day. As the babies gather strength, they'll start climbing all over mama and they'll be very active. When a baby wood duck hatches, a portion of the egg yolk is still attached to a stomach. And you will see that when you watch the babies hatch. And the baby duck absorbs that egg yolk over the first three days of its life. So for the first three days, <coughs> it doesn't need to eat or drink. And it'll get stronger and more active just by absorbing that egg yolk. 
and then we're ready for hat for jump day hatch jump day is the day after hatch day these babies are only one day old they uh, have already imprinted on mama because they have learned to recognize her voice and they will climb up the ladder that's inside this box and they will jump out into the world they hardly weigh anything they're little just little balls of fluff wow and then mama duck will gather her babies and she will take them to some place on the lake where she can hide them to keep them safe from the hawks and the owls once uh, they get into the water there's a whole nother set of predators we have to deal with so watch where your babies go watch where mama takes the babies and then go down to your duck box and check and see if any babies got left behind in about 10 percent of the cases uh 10 percent of the hatches a baby gets left behind and that was the case with toby toby was the baby wood duck you saw in the video clip that we had at the beginning and when the other babies were jumping out of the box, Toby was just beginning to hatch. So he was running 24 hours behind the rest of the babies. So we could see on our TV what was happening. After mama had taken the other babies away, we went down and rescued Toby. We put him in an incubator. He hatched in 45 minutes or so. And then, but we had to wait 24 hours until he was strong enough to be on his own in the water. So the next day we took Toby and we went on a search for mama duck and the other babies. And we spent several hours looking for mama and we could not find her. She was out there with those babies, but they're good at hiding their babies and we could not find them. So we felt like we had no choice but to raise Toby. And that was a joy, but it's a commitment and it's challenging. So uh, we, we only raise baby wood ducks as a last resort. Uh, we want to put them together with mama and the other babies if we can. If that's impossible, we feel like we really have no choice but to raise them. And we have an expert tonight on raising baby wood ducks. I'll tell you, it's hard, it's satisfying, it's rewarding, but it is a commitment. And Donna is here to talk to you about that. Welcome, Donna. Hi, everyone. Hi. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about raising Baby wood ducks, if you uh, happen to come in, in that circumstance. I will tell you, as Bob said, it is really rewarding and it is really challenging. So uh, as we mentioned, sometimes they get left behind. If you have a duck box at some point, you're gonna check it after a hatch and there's gonna be a baby that either had a birth defect or was too weak to climb the ladder or it hatched late. You know, oftentimes if there's layers and layers of eggs the mom can't incubate them all at the same temperature so they hatch it day late or they hatch you know after the babies have jumped so that is when uh you, you have a decision to make um the best idea for me is if you have a wildlife rehabilitator a licensed wildlife rehabilitator in your area then the best chance for the duck and the best idea for you is to take the duck to a rehabilitator but in a rural area where we live, um, you know, we have one grocery store and one post office. We don't have a wildlife re rehabilitator. So, um, oftentimes- I think you do, it's you. Yeah, well, we've learned it, it's been, we've been doing it for 10 years and, um, you know, we just found that it was really hard to walk away and just leave them there. Uh, but I will say that removing eggs or babies from a box that has not been abandoned by the mama is illegal. So I wanna throw that out there. Um, you know, these babies that we've raised uh, were orphaned and abandoned and they would have perished had we not intervened. But we've raised about 70 or 80 wood ducks 
rescued over the last 10 years and uh, it's, it's just been a real thrill. So I could do a whole presentation on how to exactly, because we've learned by trial and error, a lot of error, but um, I'm just gonna touch on the important highlights tonight in case uh, you've got any folks out there that, are, that have wood deck boxes or are thinking about it, this is what you can think about. Um, they are really difficult to keep alive because they're wild. They're not domesticated, they're not our pets, and our, our number one goal is to get them back out into the wild where they belong. So um, about an hour or within hours after they hatch, they will imprint on you. So they imprint on whoever the first thing is that they see or, or the first person that they see or their mama wood duck, they, uh, they will imprint on you and you become their mother and they require constant care uh, just like a, a newborn baby. And I will tell you one tip to know, if you look at this box, they are kept, you know, they're born in a cavity, either in a, in a hole in a tree or in a wood duck box. And their goal 24 hours later is to jump out of that box to follow their, their mother into where they're gonna live the rest of their life. So if you take them out of the box and you put them in a box in your home or you put them in a dog pen, which we did, it, or you put them in an, some enclosure, their instinct is to get out of that box because that's how they know they're gonna survive, okay? So you can't put them inside a box because they will jump and jump and jump and jump and jump until they are exhausted and the stress of that will, uh, it'll, it'll kill them. So what we've learned is that um, you have to put them somewhere and that's the challenge of being able to kind of come and go. So what we, what we do, and this is, crazy but we have a a, a walk-in shower in one of our guest rooms and that's where we keep the babies initially until they're stable enough to be moved outside uh, to the pen hopefully as soon as possible but since we do get some early spring hatches and it's still relatively cold outside we keep them in our shower upstairs where they we have a, a little plastic container thing that we kind of lay on the side we put a heating pad in there with a little fleece blanket over it we even have like a stuffed mallard mail that, you know, you probably sell a stuffed mallard. I know you have a lot of stuffed uh, birds, but we put a little mallard in there just so the, the baby kind of has a wing to get under at night and it feels like it's getting under its mother, which is what it would do in nature. Um, the temperature for a baby wood duck is 99 degrees. So warm to us is not warm to a wood duck. And we found that out the hard way too. If it's 80 or 85 and we're sweating bullets, that is not hot enough or warm enough to keep a baby duck alive. So 99 degrees. Um, another thing you can use that's really good is a heat lamp. And you've probably seen that in feed stores where people are raising baby chicks or baby ducks and yep. they keep a heat lamp. That gives you a little bit more ambient heating in, in an area where if they come off of the heating pad at night or they wander out, they don't get chill and die, but they are cold as their worst enemy. They are really, really susceptible to cold and it really makes you wonder how they survive in nature when they jump out into the cold water in the spring. It just shows you how brilliant mother the mama duck is. You know, she, she keeps them under her. Uh, clearly you can't keep them under you um, but she does that and you just have to try to figure out a way to keep them warm. Getting them to eat is another huge challenge. Um, again, they're not chickens. You can't put them in a pen and give them food and water and go to bed and expect them to be alive the next day. They require nighttime feedings about the first three days, just like a baby. Um, they have to be shown where their food is in captivity. You know, uh, one of the things that we do, we start them out on egg yolk. We boil a lot of eggs during, during duck season. And we, we use a little Frisbee so that they have a low profile area to go into. And we, we take our egg yolk and we mix it in with some water. And uh, if you think about them in nature, we're always trying to think about what are they seeing in nature. They're chasing bugs. They're chasing little bitty microscopic bugs. So if you can stick your finger in the Frisbee and, and create some movement, they respond to that movement just as they would bugs in the, in the uh, wild. And if you can get them eating egg yolk and get them to stay alive for about a week, then you're, you're in good shape and you're probably on your way. Then we graduate to a waterfowl chick starter. And we use something called Missouri waterfowl chicks, waterfowl starter. 
And it's not Missouri like your state mail. It no, is. I know how to spell it. M A Z U R I. M A Z U R I. That's right. Used to and sell that stuff. That? You sell it? I used to years ago for checkerboard. Yeah. It's really good stuff. It's, it's, great. it's great. It's great. I forget who recommended that to us, but it's in a little tiny little pellet, but you still have to soften that in water because these babies, I mean, they're they're small enough to fit in your hand. They feel like air. And their digestive system is tiny and we've made the mistake of of feeding them solid food too soon and it will it it will kill them. They can't they can't digest that. So we soften the the pellets. We again make a little mash, a little stew in there with water and you know, they it's brown so it's easy for them to see and they're real attracted to that movement. And then when they get to be about a month old, we graduate or we supplement their feeding with dried mealworms. And they love mealworms. Boy, you take the mealworms <laughs> out, and we're gonna go crazy. So all three of those foods are real high protein food, which is if you know birds or you know, you know, uh, high protein is is critical for them to grow their flight feathers. So they have to have that high protein. You get that in nature from bugs, uh, insects that they eat, and that's what they have to have in order to grow their, their flight feathers. So uh, once they're stable, and it's warm enough outside, here in Texas, you know, and probably Missouri too, and I don't know where, where all your viewers are, but we get a lot of kind of late spring pool, pool fronts. And so sometimes it takes a while before we feel comfortable leaving them outside. So we, we eventually graduate them from our shower. Yay, that's a good day. Yeah. And we put them in a, and um, we keep a heating pad on with the same box, same little mallard stuffed animal. We keep a heat lamp on them because the nights can get chilly. And again, they need, you know, about 99 degrees. And we eventually move them to a pen outside when it's warm enough with the little kitty swimming pool. And we get uh, water out of our lake because we're trying to emulate nature as much as possible. We don't use chlorinated water for them. Not sure how they would react to that, but we use lake water. We get water weeds out of our lake and hopefully, oftentimes we get some aquatic bugs in the water weeds. We get plant matter, stuff that they are going to be eating in, you know, when they go back to the wild. They and were, so that, they showed that's that, worked out for you. They showed that movie. They looked, that's a pool full of ducks. Yeah, it's a pool full of ducks and they love their their swim time i mean they will you get to see how they die they actually dive underwater and, and if you've ever tried to catch a wild duck on a pond which we have just to rescue them those little rascals they will dive <laughs> go up a mile away and you can that's their defense mechanism so yep. they practice that in the swimming pool it's how really fun that? so it takes about 60 days until they can fly so that's what we talk about commitment you're in it for two months um it's a long time commitment and we have a small pond over at my dad's house across the street that we talked about and his pond is much more contained than our lake area so when they start getting ready about um i would say at least a month old but uh when we think they're almost getting ready to fly we start taking them out to the pond so that they can get ready to swim in an open open waters they can start getting used to turtles and fishes and all the things that, that, that they see, you know, in their habitat. And uh, we take them out there. And typically they follow us back to the pen because they are like puppies. I mean, they are the mother and they follow you everywhere they go. Uh, but eventually they don't follow us back. They are like, we're gonna stay out here. So we let them kind of designate to us when they're ready to stay on the pond and not, not be pinned up at night. We cross our fingers prayer and we don't sleep much that night but we go out the next morning and do a head count and we do roll call and we see if, <laughs> you know all on but that's a good day because then you know they start flying they will leave uh the pond you know for maybe a couple of days they're exploring their territory and then maybe a week and then eventually you know they're on their own and that's that's what we're hoping for that's we cool. want to do a while so anyway um, it's been an amazing experience to get to these baby ducks um, up close. Uh, if you, humans never ever get to see wood ducks in the wild. They are super, super skittish. If you blink in a, in a duck blind, they're gone. If you yep. crack your, they're gone. They are, they are just one of the most, you don't get to really observe what happens once, once mama jumps out of that duck box with her baby, she takes them and hides them 
we never see them again. But raising 70 or 80 of them, we've, uh, we've got to kind of have this bird's eye view, if you will, of, of their habits. And it's been wonderful. So we know that um, they have a language of their own, you know, as I guess most birds do. They have a call when they're alarmed that they do. It, it's really funny. They kind of do this, huh, 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 like they're scared, you know, like, what is that? There's a turtle. Yeah. Never seen it. And they, uh, they have a, a sound, of course, when they're distressed, when you leave them in the shower at night and you have to go to bed and sleep because you can't sleep with them, they cry. And they have a sound that uh, I call their happy sound. It's kind of like hitting and purring. And so they're real happy when they're, when they're very relaxed and they feel safe. They kind of do this brrr, brrr, brrr. They Amazing. Have purring sound. So they have their language. They're also very territorial within their family unit. We had ducks before the most raised in one season was 23. We had 13 that were that were older, and then a hatch of 10 that we rescued. And they were different ages, so we had to separate. We had to build a separate cage because they're very territorial. And the big ducks will peck the little ducks, and they, you know, they they they're uh, territorial within their family. Yep. So watching them change in 60 days from this little ball of fluff that literally you can hold in your hand to this uh, almost adult duck that can fly. It is a major transition and it is just something really, really cool to watch. Um, we also know they have a great memory, I guess as all ducks do, or birds do, Mel, and you may know this, but you know, any ducks that migrate here, here, there and everywhere, our ducks may migrate, you know, to other parts of the United States, but females come back to the box, to the area where they were born. And it's been said, you know, and I've read, and you may have read this, that pen-raised quail or pen-raised ducks or whatever can't survive in the wild. Uh, we know that to be different because we know that some of our ducks, it takes them a year to mature sexually to have uh, their babies. So they've been gone a year and we know some of our females have come back because they're not scared of us. And we can't pick them up and hold them in our lap and pet them like right. we could. But they don't flush when we walk out the door. Uh, there was one story I'll share real quickly, and this is really cool. We were checking our duck boxes one day, and we opened the box. There was a mama hen sitting on her eggs, incubating her eggs, and she didn't flush. And typically, for a wildwood duck, if you even approach the box and they yep. hear your steps, they are, they're out. Yep. They're, gonna, they're gonna be gone. We opened the box and looked at her, and she just sat there and looked at us. I know you, Donna. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I remember you. You're my mama. Yeah. So we shut the box, and a couple of days later, we came back and we checked the box again, and we just sat there and looked at us. So we're like, "That's one of our ducks. She's she recognizes yep. us." We didn't bother her. You know, we respected her territory. We uh, shut the door, but um, had ducks. It's so funny. You can't really see behind here, but the, the back of our house is glass. We've had ducks come up and peek in our back door in the window in the, you know, where the door is because they were raised in this house and then they were raised <laughs> in the pen and they remember that. They come back to their territory where they're familiar. Yep. They'll be up on our deck, you know, where we held them for hours. And so we know that they survived, which is good. That's what we're hoping for. But we also know that they have this great memory and uh, they have a, hopefully a healthy fear of humans, um, but you know, they're not like uh, regular wild ducks. So it's, uh, it's really cool when, when one of our ducks comes back to see us, it's kind of like, you know, people, uh, teenagers coming home from college to, to visit the folks, you know, and we're always excited yeah. to, to, that that's one of our ducks. It's, it's a beautiful sight. Okay, a couple of resources I wanted to mention tonight for, for the audience. Um, we really like the Wood Duck Society. They're a great organization. I don't know if you're familiar with them, Mel. I'm not. But um, they have a, you know them? I know I'm not. We'll have to get the info from you and post it on the website, okay? Okay. Well, if you search for Wood Duck Society on Facebook, and then they also have a website, but uh, they're located in Minnesota. Minnesota, they're way yep. up north. But uh, they host an annual wood duck meeting every year and they do some banding, they do research, they do stuff with youth, a uh, really great group. They have on their website, they have a list of the best practices that they you know, scientifically know about 
what's the best predator guard, what's the best wood that box, you know, that kind of stuff. Great, great resource. Another thing that we've done, uh, we have a Facebook page here called Wood Ducks in Upper East Texas. It's really just for fun. Uh, when Bob and I moved here from Houston to our little rural community of Mount Vernon, we did, really didn't know very many people. So we started putting up wood duck boxes for people pro bono. And we have a beautiful lake here, Lake Cypress Springs, where a lot of our uh, our population live. And we have put up 147 Whoa. wood for people mostly along the lake, but for private owners as well. And uh, so we've made more than 147 friends by doing that. Yeah. And it's been a great, it's been a great, great uh, thing for us to do. So uh, Wood Ducks in Upper East Texas, our Facebook page is just kind of a social media for our Wood Duck friends to share their experiences or whatever. So we welcome anybody to join into that. Another thing we did really quickly, uh, we, a few years back, it's been about seven years ago, we did a 14 minute documentary called Stormy. And if you look on YouTube and you search for Stormy, a mostly true documentary, you'll find a story about a little duck that we raised named Stormy. And Stormy tells uh, the story of her childhood experience of being raised by humans. And so that's kind of fun, uh, just a, a fun little thing that we did, but it shows the process kind of from the egg yeah. the wing that we go through here and i know folks can find it but kaylee i want to find that and put it up there where where our folks can find it easily oh, that sounds great thank you I, I can send you the link uh two other really quick things before i close uh your, your duck boxes are high quality mail and we really uh thank have you. gotten used they last a long time they're, they're just well made uh there's a couple of other ducks depending on where you live that will also nest out in, in your boxes outside of uh, wood ducks. We get the hooded mergansers here. They're, uh, the female's not so snazzy. She's kind of a brown duck, but the male is absolutely beautiful. And uh, so hooded mergansers are, they're kind of early nesters. They usually nest before the wood ducks. They're, our, they're usually our first uh, nesters in our box. And so they don't necessarily compete with the wood ducks. They're kind of done by the time the wood ducks start. And so okay. we might get a where you are. Another duck that we really love is the Mexican black-bellied whistler. Now, if you're in Upper East Texas, if you're in Louisiana, Florida, along the United States coastal states, you might get a Mexican black-bellied whistler. And that's why we we purchase from you the black-bellied whistling duck because it has a bigger hole. And the whistling duck is, is a big duck. It almost is a like a goose-sized <laughs> duck. It's got uh, long pink legs and a bright orange bill, and we love the whistlers. They're very clean and they're very colorful. Um, the, the fun thing about the whistler, I'll just tell you real quickly, is the male and female both incubate the eggs. So they do like a 12 hour, they incubate the eggs and then they both uh, raise the babies. They both jump, you know, with the babies and as opposed to just the female raising so it's kind of fun to have the whistlers if you're in the southern yeah. part of the united states i bet the wood duck mamas are we saying guys excuse me i bet the wood yeah. duck mamas are saying take a hint here guy right right if you live up north i mean clearly the just the, the wood duck box is fun, but we like the bigger hole for to accommodate our whistlers because they're sure they're so much fun We've got a pair now here at our lake that's, uh, we actually we've had four that are kind of hanging out. I think they're waiting for a vacancy in, in one of your boxes, but uh, anyway. Um, hey, it's been great. So Bob and I are nature. We're very enthusiastic. Uh, the Wood Duck experience for us has been just a great uh, addition to our life here in Northeast Texas. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to come on tonight and share our story and be glad to answer any comments that anybody has or any questions. And uh, we, we sure think a lot about you, Mel, and oh. we, we appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you. And thank you guys so much for being on. I, I know everybody out there in the audience, we went a little longer than normal, but man, I was having so much fun listening to that. There's no way I was going to get that mama off. I, I learned an awful lot. And again, like I told you, what a great story to go through with your, with your children. And uh, Bob and Don, I just thank you guys a whole lot. And I know they're going to stand by and answer some questions. If you have some, please go ahead and send them. And in the days ahead, send them to me or 
uh, we'll forward them on down to them if I don't know it, which is what I do a lot of times, is, is I have friends that help me on some of the questions you guys ask. So keep them coming. Uh, we are going to draw some prizes right after this uh, from the audience, so stay tuned at uh, the Birdman Mail Facebook site and birdmanmail.com. We'll be announcing those. And uh, as we wrap it up, I did just want to remind you to tune in sun next Saturday again at, at 10 a.m. We're going to it's kind of weird. We're going from wood ducks to H2O, water, the secret ingredient. And we're going to talk about some different ways, not just throwing a bird bath out there, but some different ways to provide water. And then we're going to also talk about, you know, we talked a lot last Saturday. Where did the birds go? Well, folks, I think they might be around more than what you realize. And I'm going to talk to you about the times of the day or the places to look. And maybe, the you know, like I appreciate my cardinals a little more right now than I did since those goldfinches left. So we'll do that. And then next Tuesday, the Axe the Expert is going to be a good friend, Brian Lentz, from the American Bird Conservatory. And we're going to talk about how to prevent collisions as far as uh, glass collisions. So a very, very important topic. Oh, we topic. need that. Yeah. So stay <laughs> we tuned. We need that. We look forward to you guys listening to it. I'm actually, after that session, I'm actually going to, you know, we still have a few problems at our house. And I'm going to have Brian tell me what to do and you know I'm gonna say hey here's where I got my problems and we're gonna do our best to fix it and just record it as we go so maybe same thing could work down your guys' way so uh, as I wrap it up I gotta end it folks as I always do you know uh, I have several missions in, in, in these uh, seminars we put on but they're best summed up by that quote that, that uh, I've used for years and is don't forget nature is a stress reliever from God take time today to listen to the birds sing can't thank you enough for joining. Thanks, Kaylee and Jeffrey and everybody that helps here at home. And Bob and Donna, God bless you guys for being on with us. Folks, we'll see you thank Saturday. You. All right. Thank you.